What's good, Fly Family? Today was absolutely insane in the market. After CPI came out this morning, it absolutely tanked the market. Investors were spooked because inflation came in a little hotter in March. Now we all know that does not fit the bottom line of what the Fed is trying to do with this inflation. So investors are a little weary right now because the only thing that they're really holding on to is rate cuts. And if the data is not showing that inflation is getting better, then the Fed is gonna chill on those rate cuts and then the market is gonna be in no man's land. And we do not want that. But we got some more data coming out. We got PPI coming out tomorrow. We got consumer sentiment coming out Friday. So there's no reason to panic right now. Everybody should really be hype on these red days because if you've been watching the trend of what's been happening, every time we get a sell off, it may be the next day or a couple days later investors buy the market right back up so when you get these red days you want to find some support on the stock so you can find a potential bag and that's what we're going to talk about in this video but before we get into that make sure you like comment and subscribe to my channel and once you do that turn on that notification bell so you do not miss any videos that i drop i've told you before i'm going to be sharing nothing but gems on this channel and I want you to soak in all of the knowledge so you can run it up in this market. But without further ado, let's get into the video. Oh, 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 we are one. No matter what we do, we are one. Our love will see us through, we are one. And that's the way it is. Get me to start singing that we are one. In this market, we are one. <laughs> Whatever happens, we're all going through it. If you took an L today, it's more traders that took an L with you. We are one. If you made some bread today, some other traders that made some bread with you. We are one. <laughs> Man, today was crazy. CPI had the market on 10, y'all. Overnight, the market tanked 1%. And then we had a bounce off support and it tried to push up and went to 516. And then I seen the tank again. And then it just kept fluctuating throughout the day. I seen the market recover and reject at least four to five times. It was crazy in SPY today. Now, y'all know I was gunning for SPY. But when I seen the tank in pre-market, I fell back. I said, you know what? I'm going to go find an opportunity on something else. And I went over to Apple and I tried to get a little recovery. It started to push when SPY went to 516. And then I seen it losing steam. I said, you know what? I'm going to just take this bread that I got and I'm gone. So I took a little profit and I went on about my day. I knew it was going to be other opportunities to find. And luckily I did because Apple ended up coming back down and recovered a little bit and pushed up. But the market just couldn't hold and it kept coming down and I didn't want to play those type of games. So I thought to myself, it's a lot of uncertainty in the market. So I'm going to find an opportunity on something of value. So I went over to Coca-Cola and I found me a potential opportunity that we're going to talk about in this video. But before we get into that, Let's take a look at SPY, y'all. Now, y'all already know I like looking at the pre-market high and low. And today, we had a very wide range. And I do not like playing wide ranges. So SPY was out of the cards for me, man. I felt that I could find a better opportunity playing something a little bit more safe just in case SPY doesn't go and fill that gap. And that's what I had to go and do. But as you can see, we had a pre-market low of $511.27. We had a pre-market high of $521.35. And nah, nah, I wasn't messing around with that range. But tomorrow we should get a tighter range. And on top of that, we have a gap here at $517.68. And SPY could potentially go and fill that gap if we get good PPI data. Now, if the PPI data come in hot tomorrow, then I expect the continuation. But the trend I've been seeing, after every drastic drop, we've been getting a recovery. And I hope we get that tomorrow. But if not, then we got another leg down. But until that happens, what we're going to be looking at is this gap to 517.68. 
which could potentially happen tomorrow. When you start looking at levels, the dope thing about it is you'll see, man, Spa literally just played around in this range all day long. And if we go to the longer time frames, I'm going to show you something. If you look at the month, 50% retracement, that's literally the level we went and got support at all day long. You tested it a couple times. I seen SPY 512 multiple times today, and it kept bouncing for support and trying to get back over 514.76. Now, we ended up closing at 514.12 just a little bit below that. But if you see that we got good PPI data and we're above 514.76 tomorrow, then you already know. Nine times out of 10, we're going to go fill that gap at 517.68. So you better be ready for it and put it on your charts because it's going to be some money to be made. Now we're going through a little shady situation right now in the market because we're dealing with high inflation and it's taking away our chances of getting those rate cuts this year. And without those rate cuts, we're going to start seeing investors exit the market, and that's not what we want. We want them buying, so we want to get that in order. But as far as these technical levels that you already know, man, for us to start getting that bullish momentum again on SPA, we have to get back above 523.07 because if we can get there on the quarter and go two up, it's going to be a movie. But we're just in a little situation right now when we got to fight. But let me take a look at the week. On the week, we got to close right at that 517 level at 518.43. So if we can get back above that level, we may be able to get the support to start pushing up. And we got a high of last week at 524.38. So you already know, if we can get back above that previous close on the quarter, then you already know we're going to bust through 524.38. So that's what we're trying to do. So let's make it happen, Spy. Let's get some good data in, man. Quit playing these games. Don't make me switch hats and go with the Bears. Let's continue this bull run and make this money, man. Let's choose a direction. I'm tired of it, man. But I always see the energy shift on red days. It's like people are just over it, man. People don't want to trade. They don't want to look around. They don't even want to talk about the market. They just see red and close their phones. And they're gone. And that's not how you want to approach red days. Red days are going to give you the best opportunities. I know you heard the saying, buy the dip. Then why aren't you buying the dip? So you telling me you're not going to approach the market like that because you're trading options? Nah, man. I'm always going to tell y'all to think like investors. They are seeing deals on days like this. So you should be looking at it the same exact way. So as soon as we got some red, I started to try to go see deals. The first thing that I looked at was Apple because, of course, man, we got some support that we playing around with. So if you go look at the quarter, you can go see in the last few quarters, we've been playing around this 168.49 area. And I've already told y'all, for Apple to really go, we got to get back above 171.92. So if we can get some support around this area, it can potentially happen. It just didn't happen today. We didn't get that full recovery like I thought we could possibly get. We went back and tested the 168.50 area and then it rejected and came back down again. So we had a couple of spurts where Apple was trying, but it just couldn't make a move. But this is definitely a stock that you want to be looking at for an opportunity because you already know if it gets support right here, where it could potentially go back to. Now, if we look at the 50% retracement of the month, it's at 174.51. That's a target you should be looking at if Apple gets back above 171.92. It's a deal there. Now, sure, we can possibly continue to push down, but let the market show and prove that. Let's see what happens on PPI tomorrow. You shouldn't be getting down. You should be looking at it like, yo, if PPI comes in cool and we start to see the market push up, I'm going to trade Apple. I'm going to find my opportunity. And if Apple is over yesterday's close at 167.78, then I'm going to be looking at the week open as a target at 169.03 for price to go back to. That's how you got to be thinking. 
Now, if the market come in bearish tomorrow, then you will fall back because you got another day on Friday with consumer sentiment that could potentially push it as well. Now, if PPI come in the right way, then we could possibly get two green days on a recovery. Man, I be getting into my mad scientist bag when it comes to this market. I'm always trying to figure out where price is going to go. And I'm always in a mindset of an investor because I want to make my money off of what they decide to do. And I want y'all to think the same way when it comes to these red days. I do not want y'all getting sick about it. I do not want y'all getting sad about it. I want y'all to take advantage of it. So if you had shares in Apple, you would be looking at Apple to buy more on this dip. So you got to think the same way when it comes to options. Now, I could have continued to trade Apple and buy time on it, but I said, you know what? It may be a better opportunity on a stock like Coca-Cola because there's a lot of uncertainty in this market right now. And investors may be looking at stocks like Coca-Cola for stability. So I want to find those value stocks where investors are going to put their money and they're just going to chill. Coca-Cola doesn't move as crazy, but I say, you know what? The market is out of pocket right now. I'd rather play it safe. And if I'm wrong, I can cut with a small loss and not get smoked. So I decided on Coca-Cola. Now, let's get into what I've seen. If you look at the quarter, we got a previous open at 58.80. And we got a previous close at 61.18. Now, this quarter, Coca-Cola has been getting slaughtered. We literally opened and tried to push up above that previous close and reject it, and it's been selling off since. But now we're right at that previous open, which can serve as support for us to push back up to that 50% retracement at $60.14. So I say, you know what? I'm going to play my hand on this because if PPI come in cool and we get a nice recovery tomorrow, then we'll get a nice move on Coca-Cola. And Coca-Cola is one of those stocks that can trend because like I said, investors seek refuge in stocks like these. They're not just getting in and day trading them. They're getting in and holding their positions. So Coca-Cola can do what we need to do. On top of that, I looked at the ATR on Coca-Cola when I got in and we were at 99% of its ATR when I got in. At close, it moved 110% of its ATR. So I knew we wasn't going to make that much more movement of going down. So it was the right time for me to take an entry. At the current moment, as you can see, we got a week open of $59.40. So that would be the first level that I would be looking for us to go back to. Because if we can get over $59.40, then we can get some bullish movement and start to push up. And once we start to push up, our target is going to be $60.14. And the thing I want y'all to know about these smaller tickers, if you get in on the trend of a smaller ticker with options, you will make bank off of small movements. So no, you're not going to move $10 overnight. You're not going to move $20 overnight or nothing crazy. You might move 50 cents. You might move a dollar. In this case, Coca-Cola has been moving at about 64 cents on average. But with that 64 cent, you're going to make bank if you're on the right side of that movement. So seek value on red days. Find where the support is. I keep telling y'all that previous open and that previous close is something different. So right now, a lot of these stocks have been underperforming this quarter so far. So some of them might be in a situation like Coca-Cola and they might be sitting at that previous open. You just have to go look around. Use the scanner in the Discord to see what tickers are red right now. To see what tickers are inside right now. You can find a lot of opportunity simply going to the query bot. So go ahead and take advantage of that right now. Because you will know exactly what you need to do when the market opens tomorrow. If data come in cool on PPI, then we're going to have a recovery tomorrow. If it doesn't, we're going to see another leg down. And if that happens, that's going to put me in a mindset of changing my sentiment on the market. And maybe, just maybe, I'll start looking for opportunities to the downside. But the data has to tell me what to do.
So these red days are days where you could just plot your next move. And that's how you got to approach the market. Do not get sick. Do not get weary. Do not get down. Get in your bag. Start looking at these charts. Find opportunities because they are there. So tomorrow, just as it's an opportunity to the upside on Coca-Cola, it could be one to the downside. Because if we break this previous low at $58.66, the Coca-Cola can go two down on a quarter. And we'll also have economic data to back up why we should buy puts. But right now, I'm bullish. So we're not going to cross that road until tomorrow once we get PPI data in the morning. Now, I told y'all when it comes to trading options, my mindset is to think like an investor. So I looked at a couple of things on Coca-Cola as well. And it's attractive to me because they've been seeing a strong revenue growth across most of its operating systems aided by improved prices and increased sales in the past few quarters. The whole name of the game as a company is to see profit. And Coca-Cola is performing very well. And if you take a look at these previous earnings reports, it's green, 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 green. Because they have been doing well. And they got another earnings coming up on April 30th. So these are things that I like to keep in mind when it comes to my trades. I want to be in the mindset of investors because I want to be bullish on the things that I feel like investors are going to be bullish on and bearish on the things that I feel like investors are going to be bearish on. As far as Coca-Cola, on red days, I feel like investors would look at this stock as one to buy the dip on. It's a reason why this is the number one stock that Warren Buffett focuses on when it comes to dividends. You better think about things like that. As you can see, we're at 58.96. Tomorrow, we want to get above 59, and we want to hold. We want to push towards that week open at 59.40. If we can get that, we're going to start looking at that 50% retracement on the month at $60.20. It's going to be a beautiful thing. So in the morning, if you want to know if Coca-Cola makes sense to take an entry on, make sure you look at that pre-market high and low range. If you see it break out of the highs, then you already know what time it is. And if price is lower than the pre-market low, then don't take an entry on it. But if it does get back above that low, then it's go time. So what I want y'all to do tonight, after you watch this video, I want you to go into Discord, go to the query bot, and look at what's inside on the day, the week, the month, or the quarter, or just look around online and see what news is out there. See where you can find a positive catalyst for a recovery. Or if you can find a catalyst where you can look at it and say, you know what? They're about to sell this stock. So I'm going to take advantage of what's going on in the market right now. This will help you with your preparation. Preparation will help you with your decision making when it comes to entering a trade tomorrow. So I want y'all to be on point. So as of right now, we just got to chill and see what PPI talking about. And we won't know that data into pre-market. So you might as well just get prepared tonight. It's no reason to trip. You didn't miss nothing yet. You will if you're not prepared. I'm going to let y'all take the time to get prepared tonight. It's my daughter's birthday, so we're going to go celebrate that. I just wanted to tap in with y'all and knock this video out real quick so y'all can get the gems so y'all know how to run up this bag in the market. Let's get this money, man. It's right here for the taking. Let's quit playing. But before you close out on this video, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And if you're not a part of my group already, make sure you go join the Fly family at Fly Capital. The link is in my description. You'll be able to get a seven-day free trial once you sign up using that link. And I'm looking forward to building with you all. I appreciate you for taking the time to watch this video. But I'm about to get up out of here, man. I'll see y'all in the market in the morning. Y'all have a good night.